Hello and welcome to Introduction to Logic, Unit 1 Review. Um, today we're just reviewing things you've already talked about in preparation for the exam that's coming up. So the exam, here's what's going to be on the exam. There's going to be some true false questions about definitions like valid, sound, factually correct. That's like exercise 1A. There's going to be some syllogisms to identify as valid or invalid, factually correct or not factually correct, or sound or unsound. That's like exercise 1D. There's two different kinds of truth table problems. There's one where I give you a single statement, and you've got to tell me whether it's a tautology, a contradiction, or a contingent statement. That's like exercise 3A. Another kind of truth table problem, you have to do a truth table to find out whether an argument is valid. That's like exercise 3C. And there's going to be a bunch of translation problems where you have to take a sentence in English and translate it into symbolic logic. That's like chapter four exercises. And finally, there's just going to be a single problem. I say one or three here, but it's just going to be a single problem where I give you an argument, an entire argument. You've got to translate that argument and check the validity of that argument using the truth table. That's what you can expect on the exam. So we're going to review most of these kinds of problems today. The first one, true to false, questions about validity and soundness. So remember, for an argument to be sound, to be a good argument, it's got to have two features. It's got to be both valid and factually correct. So valid means the process of reasoning is good. If the premises were true, they would support the conclusion. Factually correct means the premises are actually true. You put those two features together, you get a sound argument. So a sound argument is both valid and factually correct. So this first question, all valid arguments are sound, is false because some valid arguments are not factually correct. You can have a valid argument with false premises. That wouldn't be a sound argument. But all sound arguments are valid is true because the sound argument is both valid and factually correct. So if you have an argument with true premises and a true conclusion, does that mean that it's valid? Does that mean it has a good process of reasoning? No, the premises and the conclusion might have nothing to do with each other. So you can have an invalid argument with true premises and a true conclusion. So this is false. All valid arguments with true conclusions are sound. This is also false. You can have a valid argument with false premises and a true conclusion. You can have a good process of reasoning starting with false premises and end up with a true conclusion. And this is false. All invalid arguments with false premises have true conclusions. So invalid arguments, there's really no relationship between the premises and the conclusions. You can have any combinations. You can have false premises and a false conclusion in an invalid argument, or you can have false premises and a true conclusion. So this is false as well. It doesn't have to have true conclusions if there's false premises. Every combination is possible except for a valid argument with true premises and a false conclusion. The next kind of question you'll find on the exam are syllogisms. So that's things like this. No novels or books. Some books are refrigerators. Therefore, all novels are refrigerators. You know, three questions. Is it valid? Is it factually correct? Is it sound? So valid is the process of reasoning. So this is not a good process of reasoning. If no novels or books and some books are refrigerators, that doesn't tell you that all novels are refrigerators. If anything, we're pushing the other direction, but it doesn't push in any direction at all. There's no relation between these premises and the conclusion, so this is not valid. It's actually correct, I'm asking you, are the premises actually true? You're using your knowledge about the world. Are no novels books or some books refrigerators? No, those are false. So this is not factually correct. So the question is, is it sound is just, did you answer yes to the previous two questions? If you answered yes to the previous two questions, you'd answer yes to this as well. But you didn't, so we'll say no here. Let's look at number two. All poets are authors. All novelists are authors. Therefore, some poets are novelists. So here, everything is true. But the premises don't actually support the conclusion. You could have an argument of this form with true premises and a false conclusion. Right? All dogs are animals, all cats are animals, therefore all cats are dogs, or all dogs are cats, would be an invalid, uh, invalid argument. So this is not a valid argument. It's not a good process of reasoning. It is factually correct because the premises are true, but it's only sound if you answer yes to both the first two questions, so we'll answer no to that. All diamonds are gems, that's true. Some gifts are not gems, that's true, therefore some gifts are not diamonds. This is actually a good process of reasoning because the some gifts and gems couldn't be diamonds if all diamonds are gems. So you put the premises together, they do support the conclusion. So this is valid and it is factually correct. All diamonds are gems and some gifts are not gems. 
So therefore, the answer just to both those two questions, this is sound. Now let's look at this fourth example, all camels are snowmobiles. Some staplers are camels, therefore some staplers are snowmobiles, right? This is not factually correct because those premises are obviously false, but do these premises support the conclusion? If all camels were snowmobiles, if that were true, and some staplers were camels, those staplers that are camels would have to be snowmobiles. So it is a good process of reasoning. So this is valid, but we didn't answer no, yes to both those questions, so it's still unsound. Sound, you've got to be both valid and factually correct. Okay. Next kind of question you'll face is truth tables. So there's two kinds again, two kinds of truth table questions. The first one, I'll just give you a single statement and ask you, is it a tautology, a contingent statement, or a self-contradiction? So let's look at this one. First step for doing a truth table is to figure out how many rows you need, and that's determined by how many different letters there are in the statement. So there are three P's and one Q. We only count the three P's once. So there are two different letters, P and Q. When there are two letters, you need four rows. You fill in the columns underneath the letters first, to make the first half of the rows true for P, and we'll treat the other P as the same as this P. Then we'll move on to the next letter, Q, and we'll do half as many in a row as we did for P. So we did two and then two for P, we'll do one and then one, and repeat that pattern until we get to the bottom. Once we do that, we can fill in the table. We'll do inside the parentheses first. So first we'll do this not P, that'll give us the opposite of the P column. Then we'll, we can do the arrow. True arrow false is false. True arrow false is false. False arrow true, however, is true. Those are true. Before we do the or, though, we've got to do this arrow over here. True arrow true is true. False arrow true is true. True arrow false is false. False arrow false is true. All right. Now we're going to look at the two columns underneath the arrows, because that's the two things in the soft parentheses to determine the or. So we have true on the right, that makes this true. We have true on the right, that makes this true. We have true on the left, that makes this true. We have true on both sides, that makes this true. So the or is true for every, every row here. Now we'll do this not, and that's applied to everything in the bracket. So it's applied to the entire or statement. So we'll get the opposite of the or statement here, false, 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 false. So that's the main operator. That's the last thing we did. That tells us the truth or falsity of the entire statement. So this is always false for every combination of truth or falsity for the parts. That makes it a self-contradiction. Okay. Let's do another one. So again, we count how many different letters there are. We've got P and Q. So we've got four rows again. So P will make the first half of the rows true, the second half false. So make this P the same as that P. Q will alternate TF, TF all the way down. Now we can fill in here. So we'll fill in this and here. We get true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. And over here, we'll do the knots first. And then we'll do the two-way arrow looking at the two knot columns. So in the same, it's true. and the different, it's false. So they're the same in that first row, they're different, false, true in the second one, they're different again in the third one, true, false, and true, true in the last one gives us true. Okay, so what do we do first? We do the not the two-way arrow. We're going to do the not first because if there's then the same number of parentheses, you always do not first. So this not is applied to the and. So we had true, false, 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 and false, true, true, true. Now we'll look at the knot and we'll look at the two-way arrow to figure out the two-way arrow in the middle. False double arrow true is false. True double arrow false is false. True double arrow false is false. The true double arrow true is true. And that's the main operator. That's the last thing we did. That tells us the truth or falsity of this entire statement. So is this a tautology, a self-contradiction, a contingent statement? Well, it's not a tautology, it's just not all trues. It's not self-contradiction, it's not all Fs, so it's contingent. We've got at least one true and at least one false that makes it contingent. So all true would be a tautology, if it were all false, it would be a self-contradiction, but this is contingent. <clears throat> so the other kind of truth table we'll do is for an argument. And for an argument, you've got premises separated by the colons slash the conclusion, right? 
you count how many different letters there are in the entire statement, entire argument, to figure out how many rows you need. Now here we've got P and Q again, so we need four rows. True, true, false, false, repeat. We'll treat this P the same as the P in the premise, the other premise, and treat this one the same as the one in the premises. True, false, true, false for Q. Now we can fill in these tables. So we'll do this not first. False, true, false, true. True and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. Now, well, the negation is applied to that. So the negation of the false is true. This is false, true, true. That's the truth or falsity of the first premise. Second premise, we'll look at the arrow here. True arrow, true is true. False arrow, true is true. True arrow, false is false. False arrow, false is true. True, double arrow, true is true. True double arrow, false is false. False double arrow, true is false. False double arrow, false is true. So now we're looking, we're going to ask, is this argument valid? And you look at every row, you try to find a row where you got true premises and a false conclusion. First row, we got true premises, but the conclusion is true as well. Second one, we've got true premise, we've got a false, the first premise is false. Second one, the second premise is false. And the last one, we've got true premises, but the conclusion is true. So we can't find a row we've got true premises and a false conclusion that makes this valid. All right, let's do one more of these. Here we've got another argument. First premise, if P then Q or not R, if P then Q, so it's not true that if P then R. Here we've got three different letters, P, Q, and R. So rather than needing four rows, we need eight. So we're going to choose eight rows. Make the first half of them true for P. We'll treat this P the same as the first P. And there's another P here in the conclusion. And we'll move on to the next letter, reduce in half how many do consecutively. So we had done four and then four, so we'll do two, and then two Fs, two Ts, two Fs for Q. This Q will treat the same as that Q. Two Ts, two Fs, two Ts, two Fs. And for the last letter, you always alternate TF, TF, TF all the way down. TF, TF, TF all the way down. Now we can fill these in. So here we do is inside the parentheses first, so we'll do the not before we do the or. So it was true, false, true, false, now it's going to be false, true, false, true, false, true. And then look at this and this to do the or, right? So true in the left, true on both sides, this is false, that's true, this is true, this is true, that's false, that's true. Now look at the OR and the P for the arrow to figure out the truth or false of the entire statement. True arrow true is true. True arrow true is true. True arrow false is false. True arrow true is true. False arrow true is true. False arrow true is true. False arrow false is true. False arrow true is true. Okay. Now let's do the second premise here. True arrow true is true. True arrow true is true. True arrow false is false. True or false is false. False arrow true is true. False arrow true is true. False arrow false is true. False arrow false is true. That's the truth or falsity of the second premise. So the inclusion here, we've got to do what's in the parentheses first. So true arrow true is true. True or false is false. True arrow true is true. True or false is false. False arrow true is true. False arrow false is true. These are both true. Okay. Now to this column, we're going to apply the negation to. So false, true, false, true, false, 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 false. So now we're going to check this and we're going to look at this main operators. And we look for a row, we've got two premises and a false conclusion. We get that right in this first row. Two premises and a false conclusion. There might be more than one. Yeah, there is, there's another one down here and down here. All these ones down here. But it doesn't matter how many there are. If there's even one row where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false, that makes the argument invalid. The question is, is argument valid? The answer is no. Okay? So I have some translations to do. I'm going to skip the translations because we've been doing those recently. You probably don't need to review on those. And we're going to do some translations as part of the combined problem anyway. 
So you'll have one problem where you have to both do translations and trans and then do a two table for the argument at the end. So it'll be something like this, right? You'll have a paragraph written in English, and you have to translate the paragraph into symbolic form and then do a two table for it to check its validity. So kangaroo will be safe from extinction only if sports shoe manufacturers decline to use kangaroo hides in their products. After all, if sports shoe manufacturers decline to use kangaroo hides in their products, and Australian hunters will cease killing millions of kangaroos yearly. Moreover, it's not the case that both Australian hunters will cease killing millions of kangaroos yearly and kangaroo will not be safe from extinction. The first step in this is, is to identify the conclusion. This is actually a pretty tricky one. I think it's pretty hard to figure out what the conclusion is. But I think the key is the words after all here. After all, I was telling you what I just said is true because of what I'm about to say. It's telling you that the first sentence is the, the, the conclusion and what it's about to say after, after all, is a premise. So this is the conclusion here. We'll translate the conclusion first. The kangaroos will be safe from extinction only if sports shoe manufacturers are trying to use kangaroo hides in their products. Normally, if you have only if you have if in the middle of a sentence, you have to pull the if part out at the beginning. The word only if you can leave it in the same order because the word only reverses the direction back. So this is K L S. You can leave it in the same order with only if. With only if in the middle. Next, we'll translate one of the premises. So let's translate this premise here. If sports shoe manufacturers decline to use kangaroo hide in their products, that's S. Then Australian hunters will cease killing millions of kangaroos yearly. If S, the negative. We have S at the be beginning. We have F at the beginning. We can leave it in that order. Okay. Now we'll translate that last premise. It's not the case that both. We have a negation of an and statement, not something and something else. Not the case that both A and the kangaroo will not be safe from extinction, not K. So we have another not here from um, the wording of the sentence here. Right. And once you've got the translated, you can do the, the truth table for it. Remember that the conclusion goes after the slash. So that's the first thing we translated that goes after the slash. And the two premises go before the slash. So we count how many different letters there are. We have S, we have A, and we have K. We're going to start with figuring out how many rows we need. We have three different statements here, so we need eight rows. So the first letter will make the first half of them T. So when I say the first one, I mean the first one it comes from left to right, not the first alphabetically. So we'll do S, we'll do half T is half X. And then for A, we'll reduce in half how many do we did consecutively. We'll do two and then two. Treat this A the same as the other A. And then for the K, we'll alternate TF, TF all the way down. And now we can fill these in. So let's fill in the first premise. Remember, arrow statements are only false when you have true on the left and false on the right. We get that in the third and the fourth row here. It's true all the other times. Okay. Here we've got to do what's in the parentheses first. So first we'll do the not. The not will give us the opposite of the K column. Then we'll do the and. True and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. And this, this first negation here is applied to the and. So we'll get the opposite of the and. So it's going to be true, false, true, 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 false, true, true. Okay. Arrows, again, only false when you have true on the left and false on the right. We get that here in the fifth column, and we get it here in the seventh column. Everywhere else it's true. Okay. So now we're looking for a row which is true premise and a false conclusion. The first row, the premise are true, the conclusion is true as well. And the second one, we've got a false second premise. It's okay for a valid argument to have false premises. You just can't have two premises and a false conclusion. In the third row, first premise is false. In the fourth row, the first premise is false again. In the fifth row, the premises are true, but so the conclusion is false. Uh-oh. True premises and a false conclusion that makes this argument invalid. You find a single row, we got true premises and a false conclusion, we've got an invalid argument. So that's a combined problem. Okay? And the uh, uh, that basically gives you a feel for what you can expect on the exam, and um, good luck with that. See you in the next, next unit.